Back in February 2021, we released a video looking at how Everton had spent £500 million and got worse. At the time, the Toffees were 7th in the Premier League, not good enough considering just how much they'd splashed under the ambitious ownership of Farhad Bashiri. But fast forward just over a year and how they wish they could be 7th once more. Things have gone from bad to worse to almost disastrous for Everton. They're on to their third manager in 7 months, there is disharmony behind the scenes and performances have collapsed. 29 points after 31 matches is their lowest ever return in the Premier League era and the club now find themselves in a genuine fight for survival, with their top flight status under threat for the first time since 1951. So what on earth has gone wrong at Everton this season, and how perilous would relegation be considering their investment over the years? In this episode of Football Daily Explained, we're heading to Goodison Park to find out. Everton finished the 2021 campaign by limping home in 10th. On paper, it was another mediocre season to forget with their absence from European competition now stretching to four years. However, their Italian coach Carlo Ancelotti declared he was quite happy with their development. Everton were 10 points better off than the season before, and he pointed to wins against Arsenal and Chelsea plus a historic victory at Anfield as signs of progress. Were it not for a dismal home record of just six wins and their season could have been so much more. Everton had plenty of foundations to build from. However, disaster would strike in an unexpected manner when Real Madrid came calling for Ancelotti. Needless to say, the 62-year-old wasted no time packing his bags and returning to his former side. Ancelotti had been a blockbuster addition to the Everton touchline, yet the three times Champions League winner was labelled a traitor by some fans online for his apparent betrayal, as the club hunted for their fifth permanent manager in as many years. However, any anger they felt for Ancelotti would pale in comparison to what came next. To no one's surprise, the decision to hire Rafael Benitez was not well received. The Spaniard, who had spent six years in charge of Liverpool and once infamously called Everton a small club, had been out of work for five months following a disappointing spell with Dalian Professional in China. Some Everton fans decided to vandalise the 62-year-old's home in Liverpool with a sinister banner warning him not to sign on. Though completely reprehensible, it showed the strength of anger against his appointment. Regardless, Mashiri released a statement praising the former Valencia coach's knowledge and hunger for the job, adding, Rafa is a proven winner with huge experience in coaching internationally, and we have secured the best man for achieving that for us. What's more, Benitez was hired against the wishes of the club's sporting director, Marcel Brands. The Dutchman, who also didn't want Ancelotti to replace Marco Silva back in 2019, had reportedly been pushing to hire Brighton's Graham Potter. It marked the latest chapter in a history of miscommunication and difference between Mashiri and Brands. Though the Dutchman would oversee £300 million pounds of spending at Everton, not every transfer was his choice. According to the Liverpool Echo, Mashiri led the £28 million pound purchase of Alex Awobi, splashed £25 million pounds on Ben Godfrey, and agreed the £200,000 a week package for James Rodriguez at the request of Ancelotti. The hiring of Benitez further threatened Brand's ability to recruit, thanks to the Spaniards' hands-on reputation in the transfer markets. The summer window would expose that unhappy union, but worse than that, it revealed the perilous state of Everton's finances. Years of spending big with little reward had left the Toffees' accounts under scrutiny from financial fair play, and the result was the club signed just five players to the tune of £1.7 million. Only Damari Gray commanded a fee. According to The Athletic, Brands and Benitez disagreed on multiple targets, such as PSV Eindhoven's Denzel Dumfries and Chelsea's Tino Livramento, leaving Everton once again without a suitable alternative to the ageing Seamus Coleman. The stage was set for a lacklustre campaign. Against the odds, they started strongly, winning four and drawing two of their first seven games to sit fourth by October. Damari Gray, Andros Townsend and Dominic Calvert-Lewin had scored three each as Everton successfully hit teams on the counter once they broke from their compact two banks of four. However, Benitez's defensive tactics quickly lost its cutting edge. A run of just one win and seven defeats in the next ten, including a 5-2 mauling at home to Watford, meant by January they plummeted to 15th. A long-term injury to Calvert-Lewin proved devastating as at one point the club went 294 minutes without scoring. DCL's replacement, the Benitez favourite of Salomon Rondon, produced a dismal three shots on target without finding the net in his first 550 minutes of action. The poor results meant tensions began to brew away behind the scenes. One player who was particularly critical of the Spaniards' methods was Luca Dean. A fan favourite since signing from Barcelona in 2018, the left-back had scored four and assisted 18 in his first three seasons at the club. However, under Rafa, he wouldn't register a single goal contribution in 13 appearances. Things boiled over prior to Everton's surprise victory over Arsenal on December the 6th, when an argument saw Dean drop from the matchday squad. Mashiri backed Benitez and the French international was sold to Aston Villa for £27 million in the winter, much to the horror of the Gunderson faithful. The former Inter Milan boss would also win his battle with Brands. On the same day they beat Arsenal, it was announced the 59-year-old had left his position at Goodison Park, eight months after signing a new deal until 2024. 
In his final statement, Brand said, The board and I agreed there is a clear difference in the vision and direction for this beautiful club. Meanwhile, Benitez received, quote, full support from Mashiri. But the club's fan groups made their voice clear, releasing a joint statement warning that the incompetence from the top of Everton Football Club cannot continue. Sadly, their cautionary words would not be heeded. With Brands gone, Benitez was handed the transfer control he desired, and he opened January by splashing £34 million on two fullbacks in Vitaly Mikolenko and Nathan Patterson before signing Villa's Amwai El Ghazi on loan. However, by January the 16th, Benitez was also gone. A 2-1 defeat away to Norwich proved to be the final straw in his tumultuous tenure in charge, with the club just six points from the relegation zone. On leaving, he announced, It is only once you're inside you realise the magnitude of the task, pointing to the general chaos behind the scenes. Given the club's track record, their hunt for yet another manager was never going to be straightforward. Sure enough, as the January transfer window ticked away, no appointment appeared close. Wayne Rooney stayed loyal to Derby County, Graham Potter wasn't interested, while Roberto Martinez reportedly toyed with the idea before sticking with Belgium. By January the 28th, it was revealed that the little-known Vita Pereira and Frank Lampard were the main contenders, with Pereira as Mashiri's first choice. But the Portuguese coach had no Premier League experience, while his last job had been with the Turkish side Fenerbahce. According to The Guardian, some members of the Everton board also held serious reservations over the 53-year-old, citing his relegation from the Bundesliga with 1860 Munich, while some Everton fans spray-painted Pereira out Lampard in on the walls of Goodison Park. This prompted an astonishing interview on Sky Sports, where the former Porto coach came out in defence of his record and laid out his vision for the squad. But it wasn't enough, as Mashiri backtracked, handing Lampard the job. The British-Iranian billionaire announced the club could unite behind the former Chelsea boss, but Lampard quickly discovered the magnitude of the task at hand. Under the 43-year-old, Everton have won three and lost seven of their 11 league games, scoring 10 and conceding 18. Only Norwich and Watford have endured worse records since the turn of February, while the Toffees are still yet to win on the road since beating Brighton in August. Calvert-Lewin's return from injury is yet to deliver any goals, leaving Richarlison as their top scorer on merely seven. The side has looked devoid of leadership and fragile at the back. Only Crystal Palace, Leicester and Leeds have conceded more goals from set pieces, while Michael Keane and Ben Godfrey, two players capped for England, have both committed two mistakes that have led to a goal. Worse than that, the squad has been accused of not having the stomach for a fight, with 18 of the 24 games they've fallen behind in resulting in a loss. Ex-Burnley boss Sean Dyche even told his players Everton looked like a side who'd forgotten how to win during their victory at Turf Moor in April, a game Everton were ahead in. The Toffee situation has only been worsened by multiple injuries to important figures such as Yerry Mina, Fabian Delph and more recently Andros Townsend. Their January additions have contributed little either. Nathan Patterson is injured while El Ghazi has played merely 11 minutes. Donny van der Beek, who reportedly rejected a a lone move to Newcastle to avoid a relegation battle has offered little in his six appearances. Then there is Delhi Ali, signed on deadline day in a deal that could end up costing Everton £40 million provided certain performance related clauses are met. Zero goals and zero assists from 202 minutes off the bench, however, suggest Tottenham are a long way off from seeing any cash for their faded star. In short, the team is a mismatch of signings from a multitude of different managers. They are among the highest paid players in the division, each earning an average of 85k per week, yet few have experience of scrapping at the lower end of the table. Lampard too has never been involved in a battle for survival on the touchline. And going down would be disastrous. Last year, the account showed the club lost £120.9 million, giving them an overall loss of £255 million for the past four seasons. They have an expensive stadium development on their hands. Meanwhile, their total wage to turnover ratio has crept up to 95%. 25% above the recommended UEFA benchmark. In the words of Dr. Dan Plumley, a financial expert from Sheffield Hallam University, the last thing Everton need is having £60 million wiped off their revenue overnight by dropping into the championship. With clashes against Liverpool, Leicester, Chelsea and Arsenal to come, Everton have it all to do. Fail, and who knows how catastrophic their decline might be. So that was our look at what on earth is going wrong at Everton. How bad was that hiring of Benitez? Let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. Why not? And make sure you're subscribed to Football Daily with the notification bell switched on. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.